Say hi. Hi. Say hi, Suki girl. Say hi, Wadey. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Liz and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be making some baby food, so I figured that I would tape it and show you guys how I do it. I posted about this on some of my social media um, a couple weeks ago, and I got a lot of questions about it and people wondering how to do it, how easy is it, how cost efficient is it, so I will show you guys how I do mine. And then we will go over cost breakdown and just a couple of reasons why everyone should try to make their own baby food. So I have a couple of different things that I'm making today. Um, some green beans, some carrots that I have already uh, peeled and chopped up. And over here I have some peas that are about ready to go in the food processor. And as you can see, I already did these. These are banana and blueberry purees. And each bag is about four ounces. I love these bags for making baby food because I use these when I pumped. And now that I don't pump anymore, I have like a million of them. So these are a really great uh, way to store your baby foods. If you get the um, feeder set, it comes with this. I'll show you how to use this. And it also comes with these caps. Like this is one of those uh, applesauce caps, kind of. Like those applesauce pouches. So they, when they get older, they can just screw this on here. And eat the food directly out of the pouch. And then this is a spoon. This is a really cool one. You just pop it right onto the top for when you are out and about. And it's very convenient, so I really love these bags to store my purees in. The main things that you're going to need to do this are a food processor. I use a food processor. Some people use blenders, Nutribullets. Um, I know they have like a baby bullet. Whatever you need to do to get your stuff all blended up nice and smooth. And I don't have a steamer, but I have a pot with a steamer basket, and that is how I do it. And then... Um, whatever you're going to use to store it. So like I said, I'm using these bags. The peas were just in the pot. They are finished. They are ready to get pureed. So I went ahead and put in my carrots. So I'm going to let these carrots steam for about 10 minutes. So I have them pureed up a little bit, but they're not really to the consistency that I want right now. So this is why I like using a food processor for this exact reason. Because I can come over to the pot See how it's all green and take water directly out of the pot and put it in the food processor and you can do that until you reach the consistency that you like. So once you get it to the consistency that you like it, you can go ahead and put it in your jar or your bag or whatever you're going to use to store it. So I went ahead and put it into my container, my dispenser. And I'm just going to fill it up to four. And then squeeze the air out of it. And then I will date it and label it. Okay, so the timer for the carrots just went off. So I'm going to show you how I can tell if they're done. And so I just take a fork and you should be able to just poke right through it. And these are perfect. I'm just adding my water until it gets to that really nice, smooth consistency. So I'm going to use my rubber spatula and just kind of push through it and make sure that there are no chunks that need to be blended still and this is ready to be packaged. The way that Mason likes her carrots that I've made this for her many times is I put a little bit of butter in it and then I sprinkle 
just a little bit of cinnamon in it to give it a little bit of flavor. So then I'll turn it back on and let the butter melt and let the cinnamon mix in really well. So I just did the green beans. Green beans, in my opinion, are like the trickiest vegetable to puree. So this one did take a little bit more time, a little bit more attention. Um, but again, I put butter in there and then just like a little bit of garlic because I don't want her to get used to the sweet foods. I want her to start experiencing savory foods as well. So just a little bit of garlic powder in there. Not a whole lot, just a little to give it a little bit of flavor. So this is the end result. It took me about an hour to do all of this, including cleaning and storage. So up here I have the green, the blueberry and bananas, and then these ones are green beans, carrots, and peas. So this will last us about 10 days. So she is all set for the next week and a half or so, just depending on how she's feeling and how much she wants to eat every day. So I said I would do a little bit of a price breakdown, so I went ahead and did that. The one that was by far the most expensive was the peas. Bought the peas for $7.99 because I buy the stringless snap peas because the string in the peas doesn't puree up at all. So the option is to either pull the strings out before you puree it, strain them after you puree it, or just don't do it at all. So that was the only one that was not really um, as cost effective. It was still only about a dollar thirty three cents a serving, which is to the typical price of jarred baby food anyway. Sometimes you can get them ten for ten, but the peas was the only one that broke a dollar. The blueberries and bananas came out to about fifty eight cents a bag. The carrots came out to about forty cents a bag, and the green beans came out to about sixty six cents a bag. So, when I went ahead and just did it as a total combination of price and um, serving for everything instead of doing it all individually, I got a price point of $0.83 cents a bag. In total, I spent $14.86 on these ingredients. So, for the price, I think that making baby food is so worth it especially once they get into that age where they're eating purees multiple multiple times a day it's definitely worth it so now some other reasons that you might want to make your own baby food um one is that it's more nutritious because mass-produced jarred baby foods are heated to temperatures much hotter than cooking to keep them preserved in the jars so the preservation process heats the nutrients and damages them. When you make your own baby food, you don't have that problem because you're not heating these foods to these extreme temperatures. The next reason that you might want to do this is because obviously it's less processed. You know, everything that you're doing to make these purees, you're doing in the comfort of your own home and you know exactly what's going in there. Um, you're the one washing the vegetables, you're the one cooking them, and you're the one pureeing them and storing them. So for me, it makes me feel a lot better because a lot of jarred baby foods that are on grocery store shelves are older than your child. Those jarred foods have been made so far in advance. My daughter's six months old. Most of those foods were made before six months ago. So that's something else to think about. And then, of course, cost effectiveness. Um, those are my three big reasons for making your own baby food. And feeding ch children is such a touchy subject because of the various reasons that people do or don't do something. It's like breastfeeding. Every mom has their reason for 
doing what they do and feeding their baby the way that they feed their baby. So just always remember that fed is best. It doesn't matter if your baby's food comes from a jar or if it comes from your own kitchen, just so long as that they are getting that nutrition and they are getting fed and they're happy and they're healthy, that's really all that matters. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and share this so that all of your mama friends can see this and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a wonderful day.